earth. A world of water. Nearly three quarters of its surface lies beneath a blue patchwork of seas and oceans. For us, an alien realm we've barely begun to explore. Extraordinary life forms live within these depths, each shaped by a world of immense variety and extremes. Like the continents they encircle, our oceans are filled with stories to tell, secrets to uncover, and characters to meet. This is a journey into their beautiful but fragile world, where the struggle to survive produces enchanting elegance. Breathtaking teamwork and spellbinding encounters that reveal the magic of the Big Blue. Oceania a corner of the Pacific that harbors both Australia and more than 7,000 islands that span an area of ocean almost the size of Europe. Even with Australia's enormous bulk, this is the world's smallest continental landmass. But its tropical waters are home to some of the largest coral reefs on Earth. These are the rainforests of the sea whose colorful inhabitants live among coral gardens that may be the oldest and most diverse on the planet. A rich cradle of life that is vital to the health of the planet's oceans and may contain secrets that could benefit the entire human race. But this apparent paradise has at times become a battlefield. Oceania's islands, seas, and skies were once ablaze with fierce fighting that has left in its wake countless tales of brave yet senseless sacrifice and terrible proof of our ability to self-destruct. Nature has long since reclaimed center stage. And today's battles are once again fought out by Oceania's most ancient survivors. From island invaders to nighttime raiders in a world where few can afford to let down their guard for an instant. Of all Oceania's islands, few can match the fairy tale feel of the Palau Archipelago. A collection of more than 250 islands that rise like turrets from the surface of the Western Pacific Ocean. Many are formed from the limestone of ancient coral reefs that has been pushed to the surface by the relentless traction of the Earth's plates far below. Below the waves, the islands are fringed by the ancestors of these reefs, which are very much alive. These coral communities are renowned for a wealth of marine life that takes advantage of the wide assortment of living spaces on offer, that have earned Palau a reputation for housing some of the richest underwater habitats on the planet. But it was not the island's natural treasures that once made them a prize to be won at all costs. In World War II, 
Their strategic position close to the Philippines plunged them into the heart of the battle for the Pacific. The United States was determined to wrestle ownership of these tiny peaks from Japan's iron grip, but did not anticipate the incredible sacrifice that would be required to achieve this. The battle for the island of Peleliu was among the bloodiest of the Pacific War. More than 15 million rounds of ammunition were fired by the US forces alone, and more than 12,000 lives were lost in a struggle for just six kilometers of precious dry land. Today, the rusting tools of war still stand guard, as though their last assignment was to ensure that the sacrifice and bravery of the men who fought these battles can be vividly recalled. Waters around Palau are also a cemetery for a lost fleet of wartime wrecks. Nature is doing her best to recycle these ruins, and marine life has successfully conquered every broken bow, barrel, and twisted piece of hull. But for many wrecks, the outline of their crumbling shells is still visible enough to allow their terrible final moments to be pieced together. The Iro Maru was a 44 meter long Japanese Navy oiler that in March 1944 limped into Palau's sheltered waters, having been crippled by a torpedo strike from a US submarine. A week later, the ship finally ran out of lives when American bombers scored a direct hit, killing 50 of her crew. The tangled maze of gunnels and gangways are now the living quarters for fish, but were once home to 250 men who sailed with the knowledge that they were a prime target for the enemy and that each time they ventured out into the Pacific might be their last. The bows of some wrecks still stand proud, forever waiting to complete their final mission. Neatly stacked helmets and boxes of live ammunition lie scattered as though awaiting the call to arms of a ghostly army. An eerie monument to immeasurable human suffering, but one that can help us appreciate a brighter future by bringing us face to face with a terrible chapter of our past. Palau is a mecca for divers from across the globe, and the blue corner offers them a unique challenge. A roller coaster ride of currents awaits, and divers must anchor themselves to the reef wall to avoid being swept away. The strong, nutrient rich currents that rise from the depths kickstart a food chain that quickly converts the ocean's microscopic inhabitants into the mighty. Gray and black tip reef sharks are among the top predators here. They surf the current's invisible waves, looking for opportunities to grab a passing bite with bursts of speed of up to 40 kilometers an hour. Palau's sharks are among the most fortunate in the world. 
Up to 100 million sharks are killed around the globe each year to supply the shark fin soup trade. And many species are threatened with extinction. In response, this small island nation became the first to designate its entire waters a shark sanctuary. And the sharks, along with the reefs that they keep in balance, have flourished. Healthy seas rely on healthy sharks, which seems a lot to risk for the sake of an expensive bowl of soup. Not far from the blue corner, Palau offers a bizarre demonstration of the potential consequences of eliminating an ocean's predators. These inland lakes are flooded with seawater, but are virtually cut off from the open sea. Without large predators such as turtles to prune their numbers, the golden jellyfish began to adapt and multiply. In this lake alone, there are 13 million of them. They use energy provided by photosynthetic algae that live within their tissues to make up for the slim pickings on offer in the lake. Their weak stinging cells are only potent enough to overpower the tiniest planktonic creatures. During the day, the jellies follow the motion of the sun's rays across the lake. The sun fuels the algae within their bodies that provide their hosts with energy and also warns the jellyfish of impending danger. By staying in the sunlight and avoiding the shadows cast by the trees that line the lake, the jellyfish steer clear of the zone where their only predators lurk, and enemies that can devour jellyfish far bigger than themselves, should they be unfortunate enough to lock tentacles with them. The lake is only thought to be 12,000 years old. But in this short time, a world without predators has been turned into a jellyfish soup. Other secret worlds in the Palau archipelago are shrouded in darkness. This is the Chandelier cave system. It was sculpted by rainwater, which over millennia eroded the limestone interior of one of the islands and molded the stalactites and stalagmites that resemble glittering chandeliers. The caves were once open to the air but the sea level has since risen to conceal the entrance, which now lies several meters below the surface. In this world without sunlight, only a handful of specialist creatures can be found. Along with intrepid divers, looking to put their fears of the dark and tight spaces to the test. To the southeast of Palau lies a larger island chain, Papua New Guinea. This archipelago is formed from a string of lofty volcanic peaks, some of which rise more than 2,000 meters above the ocean. Dozens of islets and coral atolls create a network of seagrass beds, mangroves, dunes, lagoons and floodplains in which marine life thrives. The island's remoteness is reflected by the number of new species that are regularly identified here.
Recent discoveries include types of spiders, frogs, and a species of woolly rodent the size of a domestic cat. Its dense jungles are among the least explored places on Earth and remain a refuge for some of the world's most secretive people. Many communities live within the mountainous interior of the islands and have little contact with the outside world or each other. Papua New Guinea is the most linguistically diverse country in the world with more than 700 native tongues. Its people are adept at living from the resources that the world around them provides. The stress-relieving properties of betel nut is nature's far less harmful answer to cigarettes, although chewing it does turn teeth and lips a brilliant red. The people of Papua New Guinea have a relationship with the sea that has lasted for 35,000 years. Their appreciation of the bounty it provides is today helping to manage and preserve some of the most treasured coral reefs on Earth. Kimba Bay is one of the most diverse marine environments on the planet. It forms part of the Coral Triangle, an area of Oceania that covers less than 2% of the world's seabed, but contains more than 75% of its coral species and more than a third of all reef fish. This may be the oldest coral reef system on Earth, and its diversity surpasses that of Australia's colossal Great Barrier Reef. Looking like a giant alien vegetable patch, the corals come in every imaginable shape, size, and color. A community of more than 800 species of fish make their living between their plates and branches. This creates a dazzling underwater carnival of color. Wave-like filaments and flat, shady overhangs are among the many forms that these living sculptures can mold themselves into. This collection of corals is vital to the health of our oceans and, potentially, the human race. So many coral species are harbored here that they could in future be used as a seeding stock to repair damaged reefs across the globe. Its myriad of species, many of whom manufacture complex chemicals that help them survive, may also provide the answers we need to cure some of the most challenging human ailments. Coral reefs are already considered to be the medicine cabinet of the 21st century, and their inhabitants have already contributed to treatments for illnesses including cancer, arthritis, and Alzheimer's disease. It's likely that if we protect our reefs, we'll discover even more life-giving properties within them. 
are the perfect form and function that can be found within this intricate web of life, will always provide a perfect tonic for the soul. The coral gardens of Kimba Bay remain one of nature's finest creations. But like much of Oceania's vivid seascapes, they too bear the scars of human conflict that once turned their life-giving waters into a graveyard for soldiers lost at sea. During World War II, the skies above Papua New Guinea were among those filled with American and Japanese pilots locked in a deadly game of battleships. Among their objectives was to seek out and destroy the enemy's warships and aircraft carriers. But many would not make it safely back to their fleet. On the 26th of December 1944, Japanese pilot Tomiharu Honda ditched his Mitsubishi Zero fighter into the waters of Kimba Bay. The Zero was a warplane of legendary status. It had outstanding speed and maneuverability and left an indelible mark on history during the Battle of Pearl Harbor and later as the transport of choice for kamikaze pilots who deliberately crashed into American ships in a last desperate attempt to turn the tide of war. It's likely that this pilot was simply lost in the vastness of the Pacific Ocean and ran out of fuel. The wreck is so well preserved that the cockpit's controls remain in their final positions, set to perform the perfect controlled landing. Nobody knows of Tomiharu Honda's fate, but it's thought that he never returned to Japan. It is possible that he escaped the crash and found a life within the jungles of Papua New Guinea. Although a more gruesome version of the story imagines he was served up as a ceremonial feast, by one of the many cannibalistic tribes which at that time were still common on the islands. But if his flawless landing just 50 meters from the shore could not save him, it has at least ensured his story will be told for many generations to come. Kimba Bay itself is just one small pocket of the Bismarck Sea, another corner of the Coral Triangle that was once a pivotal battlefield in the war in the Pacific. Somewhere beyond the jungle of coral lies the wreckage of a Japanese convoy that was devastated by American warplanes in a battle so one-sided that it became a notorious turning point in the war. Today, life pulsates with the currents. Many reefs here sit on top of underwater volcanoes that rise thousands of meters from the ocean floor. Volcanic activity of the region also draws deposits of metal ores to the surface of the seabed. Modern technology now offers the prospect of a new gold rush in the depths of the ocean. But hopefully, our insatiable hunger for precious metals will not overshadow the need to protect the Bismarck Sea's well-established biological treasures.
beyond the reef, a squadron of Big Eye Trevelli arrives in tight formation. These shoals can involve 1,500 individual fish, which form slowly rotating aggregations during daylight hours. At night, these fast-moving predators will break ranks to hunt in small groups for tiny fish on the reef. They are not the only task force that their prey will have to watch out for. Chevron barracuda are known for the black bars that stripe their flanks. They also form shoals that work together to search for and corner prey, who stand little chance against these streamlined hunters, who can reach 40 kilometers an hour and come armed with powerful jaws and fang-like teeth. But their reputation is nothing compared to their larger cousin. Great Barracuda has managed to earn a fearsome reputation, based mainly on its toothy grin. These solitary hunters can reach nearly two meters in length and weigh in at 50 kilograms. Their curious nature means that they often keep a close eye on divers, and they have been known to mistake the silvery flashes of jewelry for the convulsions of injured fish. But bites are rare, and the only real threat to humans is when we eat them. As a top predator, toxins in the marine food chain can accumulate in their flesh and cause poisoning that can be fatal. The islands of Fiji are known as the crossroads of the South Pacific. A collection of 300 volcanic islands, of which around 100 are populated by a cosmopolitan community of people who've settled here from all corners of the Pacific Basin. Meat wrapped in taro leaves and cooked with hot rocks is a traditional island dish. The islands are surrounded by the azure waters of the Pacific. That, at first sight, appear to be an inviting playground for some of Oceania's most charming characters. But survival on the reefs that surround these islands is a serious business. This is an ancient seascape that is home to some of the ocean's oldest inhabitants. Barrel sponges rise like chimney stacks. They grow only a few centimeters each year, but slowly climb to one and a half meters in height. Those the size of an oil drum may have lived for 200 years, while the very largest may be over 2,000 years old making them some of the longest lived animals on Earth. Some are cavernous enough to fit a person inside. They filter seawater through walls that are made from a mesh of tiny glass needles and protein fibers. Any edible particles are consumed. But sponges also provide a safe haven for many other species to hide within. Although feather stars prefer to cling to the outside, adding a fashionable splash of color to these timeless ocean inhabitants.
soft corals also appear as though they've been transplanted from the set of a science fiction movie. Fiji is known as the soft coral capital of the world. Unlike their reef-building cousins, these corals do not form hard limestone skeletons. Instead, they use flexible spine-like structures for support, which also function like thorns on a rose bush for defense. They may look like bizarrely painted vegetables, but this benign appearance disguises the fact that they are in fact voracious predators. Using tiny stinging tentacles, they comb the currents for any nutritious morsels that might drift into their clutches. For tiny planktonic creatures, this tranquil looking garden of coral is a living wall of millions of hungry mouths, any one of which will gladly devour them. Anemones also use stinging tentacles to subdue their prey clownfish have turned this to their advantage. By wearing a protective overcoat of mucus that prevents the anemone's stinging cells from firing, the clownfish benefit from the protection offered by this cloak of tentacles. A stable home for a rather complicated family life. Clownfish form monogamous pair bonds, but are capable of being both male and female within their lifetime. If the female within the partnership dies, then the male undergoes a rapid sex change to replace her and seeks a new male to continue the family line. After sundown, the atmosphere on the reef begins to change as the night shift clocks in. Christmas tree worm tests the water as it emerges from its tubular home that it creates by tunneling into the walls of a living coral. dark, the waters above the reef stand empty, as if the area is under curfew. For the inhabitants of a coral reef, nightfall can bring danger. The fish that are so restless during the day now look for a place to hide. They know that some of the reef's deadliest predators are at their most active after dark. No one can afford to be caught out if they decide to pay this corner of the reef a visit. White tips. 
Hunting in packs, these sharks use their flattened snouts and wiry bodies to tunnel into the reef and tear sleeping fish from their beds. Their dorsal fins are set well back to allow them to snake further into the corals. Only the most well dug in creatures stand a chance. Once the whirlwind of snapping jaws has passed, many of the gaps between the corals will stand empty. Fiji's rainbow reefs have in recent times had to show much resilience. Recent rises in the temperature of these waters caused a phenomenon known as coral bleaching. When the water becomes too warm or too cold, the corals become stressed and shed the colorful algae that live within their tissues. A blanched white skeleton remains. The coral polyps inside can survive but are highly vulnerable to other threats that may kill the colony completely. Following these scares, Fiji's reefs have bounced back, with new corals overgrowing many that were lost. But the temperature of the oceans may yet be the deciding factor in their future. Between the reefs, some of Fiji's most famous residents are on patrol. Grey reef sharks usually hunt alone, but form social groups of five to twenty individuals that are often found where the reef meets the open ocean. Many in these aggregations appear to be pregnant females, who it's thought may use the warm, shallow surface waters to help speed the development of up to half a dozen pups. Sharks are extremely tolerant of the many divers who come to marvel at them. Although they're not afraid to occasionally remind everyone of exactly who's boss here. These sharks rarely exceed two meters in length, but they're fast swimming, agile predators, whose confident demeanor means that they often dominate many other larger shark species on the reef.
The sharks are essential to the health of the reef. By keeping the numbers of their prey in check, they maintain the delicate balance that ensures the chances of survival for all species. Without them, the entire ecosystem would collapse. reef sharks are known to communicate their mood by using threat displays. An arched back and lowered pectoral fins means keep your distance. Like all sharks, they have a sixth sense that allows them to perceive the world in a way that is barely possible for us to imagine. Electrical sensors in pores within their nose can detect electromagnetic impulses in the ocean as low as one billionth of a volt. The sharks use this to form an electrical map of their surroundings and can follow the movements of every muscle that so much as twitches within their prey. The electrical whirring of an underwater camera may tempt them to come closer to divers. Millions of years of adaptation, left rather disorientated by the world of modern electronics. From a photographer's point of view, it provides a great opportunity for the perfect close-up.